Simon Says. Because I'm a comedy guy and I don't like being told what to do, you know? Yeah. I go I go there. I I cross all kinds of boundaries and lines. Uh um, I haven't started my set yet, so I'm kind of in the room in my set. Oh yeah, so who's, who's already abandoned their uh, New Year's resolution? Make some up noise or applause. Or laugh. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to make myself better. Um, so I'm trying to drink less alcohol. Um, and I never really noticed how much being hungover affected me until I until I stopped drinking. Until then, I, I just thought that that's how Saturday felt. You know, like every day has a feeling. Monday feels like, oh, it's the Mondays. We got the Monday blues. Everybody hates Monday. Wednesday, it's like, uh, it's hump day. Okay, we're getting close to the weekend. It's great. Kind of. It's okay. Wednesday is okay. <laughs> Saturday, excruciating headache and nausea. <laughs> Saturday is the day where you can't look at natural light. <laughs> that's a universal feeling, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm starting to exercise. That's new for me. Exercise. Um, so I'm, I'm in the... I'm at the point where I'm researching uh, some appropriate exercises for me. <laughs> on the internet. And one thing I'm certain of is the exercise that is not for me is jogging. Because I, I hate myself, but not that much. Uh, jogging, I stumbled upon this, uh, this article on the, on the Guardian on the internet. And it was about jogging, it was about the origins of jogging. Jogging was invented in the 1960s. Did you know that? <laughs> until then, until then, nobody had ever run outside before. It was brand new, um, and it was such a shock to people to see, to see people running that they would call the police because they thought they were suspicious. I, of course, think that that's perfectly acceptable. I think that's actually the only reason the police should exist is to arrest people conspicuously exercising. <laughs> I just, because it's, it's, you know, it's because I'm fragile. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of my, my fragility, because I, I don't want to be eating brunch, you know, at one of the fabulous, like, like Lula Cafe show. Uh, eating brunch, and then I, all of a sudden I see this hot person running with a flat stomach, and I'm sitting over here with my, my Dale Gribble body. That's a king of the hill reference. I have a, 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 a big stomach and small limbs. That's, that's the trouble with me. Yeah. That's my problem area. Me. Um... My friend Alex is here. Yeah. I'll, I'm not gonna rip on this. She introduced me to estate sales. Do you know? Do you know what those guys, those yeah. guys are? <laughs> estate sales. They're um. They're a place. They're things that you go to. So people, when they're moving or they die, you can go to their house and buy all their stuff. It's like an inside garage sale. Yeah. And you can save a lot of money doing that. Um, the, the thing about those is, I always see a lot of, like, old people there. And I'm kind of like, don't go too far with that Garfield thing. <laughs> We're going to be at your place next week. <laughs> you, you just had to have that 26-volume encyclopedia with, uh, you know, man has not walked on the moon yet. <laughs> it's old. Like, uh, but I shouldn't be talking because I'm getting old too. I uh, I turned 29, which is like, you know, getting up there. It's a it's a weird age because it's an age where doors start to close for you. 
Like, for instance, I'll probably never play in the NBA. I'll probably never be a professional basketball player. I'm just about to hang up the towel. But, but also, I'll probably never die in a pointless war, so... It's kind of a win-win. I'll never be a professional basketball player, but I'll also never die in a pointless war. I'm 29, and I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm good at. I'm trying to figure out what my talent is. That was the, the joke. I guess that one's going in the DVD. Um, and so I grew up what, reading the record book, the world record book, and seeing all these great, talented people in it. But part of me is kind of scared. I'm scared to death that I'm actually the guy who can put 160 clothespins on his face and neck. Okay? There's this guy, Gary Turner, and his talent is he can put 160 clothespins on his face and neck. And that's it. And that bothers me because he's going down in the books just as that. That's the, his only contribution. And what the fuck have I ever done? I haven't even done that. I guess it doesn't have to be the that. It could be the guy who has a, a beard made out of bees. Or the guy who ate an entire airplane. That guy's real. But it, it sounds impressive until you, you find out that it was a two-passenger plane, so it was not that impressive. That's not the, it's, not, it's not like it was a 747. Could you imagine? I'm not gonna go there. Um, I feel like at my book. Uh, my secret talent. Oh yeah, I mentioned earlier that I kind of hate myself. Um, so what I like to do is I like to learn about prodigies, people who were exceptional at something from an early age. And then I compare myself to them. <laughs> like, everybody knows the famous Mozart, the Mozart. He was, a, he was a composer and a musician, and he toured all over Europe. By the time he was eight, he was writing compositions. I thought a coin laundry was a place where you went to wash your money. I, s I had a lot of dirty pennies in my possession. I thought that that was a good idea. I think I was pretty enterprising, actually. Um, John Keats, he was a, a famous poet. He was actually a medical doctor, and then he became a famous poet, and then he died when he was 25. And we still read about him and read his poems uh, to this day. Um, <laughs> I used to think that babies came out of your belly button. It makes sense, right? You, the uh, you're just like astronauts tethered in space, like the baby and the mom are connected by an umbilical cord. Uh, there's Elizabeth Cotton. When she was 13, she invented a, a style of guitar playing and wrote, you know, timeless blues and folk songs. The first time I masturbated, I thought I invented it. Um, and you can hear all about it in my one-man show, 2001, A Personal Space Odyssey. Still looking for a venue for that one. Uh, that's everything I have, so thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for listening.